wetlands more valuable, wet or dry? The answer to that question was easy for the Midwest's first European settlers, dry. The early settlers, and those who followed them, wanted dry land for farms, cities, and roads. So for well over a century, they drained the land with ditches, drain tiles, and levees. Millions of acres went dry across the Midwest, including more than 90% of all the wetlands in Illinois. The results were impressive for those early settlers, but disastrous for modern Midwesterners. When we lost wetlands, we lost natural systems that can clean our water, support our wildlife, and store our floodwaters. We've tried other ways to regain some of those services, and to some degree that works, but in some ways it doesn't. It also amounts to doing things the hard way. It's much more expensive than letting wetlands do what they can do for us, and it can't entirely get the job done. By draining wetlands, we've increased the flooding that ruins our basements and businesses. Nutrient pollution is clogging our estuaries and fouling our rivers. Bird populations have shrunk. Our children are growing up thinking that a frog or a turtle is something only found in aquariums. Fish and shellfish populations that once provided both food and recreation have vanished. These problems, and many others, are directly related to the lack of wetlands on our landscape today. But what if we revisit that first question and turn it around? Could wetlands be more valuable wet than dry? At the Wetlands Initiative, we say yes. Wetlands are more valuable when wet. More valuable for clean water. More valuable for wildlife habitat. More valuable for reducing flood damages. More valuable to a healthy economy. But it's too late to just preserve wetlands. There aren't enough left to save. We will have to get them back by restoring them. We know how to do this. For example, in 2001, in North Central Illinois, the Wetlands Initiative turned off the drainage pump that had been running since 1910 at the Hennepin and Hopper Lakes on the Illinois River, keeping that land dry for 2,600 acres of corn and soybean fields. Today, the rich lakes, wetlands, and wet prairies are back. It's been transformed into the Dixon Waterfall Refuge. We're also restoring wetlands and wet prairie with the U.S. Forest Service at the Medewin National Tallgrass Prairie, the largest restoration effort of its kind east of the Mississippi. Medewin sits just an hour's drive from Chicago's Loop. This land was used for decades by the U.S. Army to build bombs and ammunition. Today, it's being reloaded as beautiful natural areas that will work to provide all of us with important eco-services. And the Wetlands Initiative is working to develop new ways to pay for wetlands restoration. How can we make wetlands restoration generate a profit? Why should a landowner make money only by draining the wetlands when we know that wetlands do useful things which cost us a lot to do in other ways? What if there was a market for the ecosystem services that wetlands offer? We've got a project aiming to show how that can happen out in the real world with real farmers who have real bills to pay. We call it Growing Wetlands for Clean Water. The Wetlands Initiative is working to demonstrate that wetlands are more valuable wet than dry. Please join us 